talking to myself. All right. Please help me welcome Mona Cooley for her her, her webinar session on on the mentoring team. Take it away, Mona. Oh my goodness. Welcome to everybody out there. I was having a talk to myself and nobody was responding. So I I tell you, this technology is the most fun. I need a session just on that. But welcome to mentoring and you will see building teams. And I'm going to talk about that a little later of what I mean by building teams. So first of all, I want to say is that I thank Lorraine for contacting me and saying, hey, they would like to have some mentoring. And I shared with her a new concept that could be very helpful to the clubs in Alberta and Saskatchewan. And she seemed to be excited about it. And I guess that's why I'm on the call. It's great to be part of District 99. And I think there's some District 42 here. And I welcome you all. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is go through quickly some of the modules. There's four modules, mentoring modules. And Glenn does have all the links available to you to go on. I'm only going to reference those four modules and a bit about you know some of them. There's two modules that I won't talk about, which is the promotion end, but I'll talk about how to implement. And then I'm going to get into the second part, which is mentoring teams. And I want to spend most of the time on that piece of it tonight. So let's get started because uh, we, now that I've taken up most of the time trying to get technology under control, we are going to move along here. Now, I don't know how many of you have a mentoring program. I'm, I'm not even sure why you're maybe even on this call. You're maybe thinking of starting to implement a club a mentoring program but maybe you're just wanting to see what else is new that we're having out there. And if that, whatever the reason is, I'm just so glad that you're on the call. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is implementing the mentoring program, and that's module two, and it's page five to six. And the, these are the five key points of setting up a mentoring program. So first of all is appoint your mentoring coordinator. And that can be anyone in the club that would like to coordinate and put this program together. But they are working with a team, and I'll talk about that in the second point. So point your mentoring coordinator. I've been our mentoring coordinator for our club for three years. And I love doing the job because it's bringing our newbies into the fold of the club and they get a mentor and they get to be part of the whole process. So appoint a mentoring coordinator and that team member that you can be with is your VP of education and also your VP of membership. Now you may work with your VP of education a little bit more because that's under their role and responsibility. And this is one piece that we separated under the VP of education and had this as a separate uh, section. So form your core team, and then also design your program for your club. And I'm going to mention a few points, but what I want to say here is, you all have clubs that are dynamic, you've got your style, everything's in there. Don't change the face of that. That isn't what this is about. It's about putting in some pieces to add to, enhance, what complement, whatever it is. So design the program, but these are some tips for you. And I'm only going to mention a couple. First of all, identify the needs and wants of the club members. Let's see what's important. And then assess the challenges and the opportunities. And those are two of the five points, and I thought they were the key ones to mention in here. Then set priorities is the next one. And the two points I'll mention here is sign a meeting mentor. I will talk about that in another slide here if you're not familiar with our mentoring uh, individuals. And then the other one is matching new members with foundation mentors. The meeting mentor is to assist the new ones. 
And a meeting mentor could be that one that just started in the club a month ago, had a brand new person comes in and here they can help that person do the timing, show them how it's done or grammarian, those roles. And what that does, it gets everybody involved and engaged in the process and helping and everybody can help each other. And then with matching the new members with the foundation mentors, these are the foundation mentors are your more experienced and I'll talk a bit more about those in a few minutes. And those are matched with new members. Now the new members are ones, maybe they have a particular member in the club that they said, you know, maybe that's the person I would like to be my mentor. It seems to fit my style or they have a skill that they really like and they want to be, have that person as a mentor. And then it's about tracking the results. Decide how you will evaluate the results of the program. How will you track it? How are the partnerships working? And gathering some statistics of what is happening in your club. There's lots of forms in that package, in that module, and you can use any one of those. Then there is the phases and implementing the phases, which again is on page eight. And that is in, in, the, in the same module, module two. And again, use it as a guideline. So phase one could be this, establish new member orientations, assign a meeting mentor for anyone taking on a meeting role. There's other points in there, but that just gives you an idea of what that phase one would look like. Then there's phase two, focus on the new members, identify experienced Toastmasters that are qualified and willing to be the foundation mentors. And again, that's another phase. And it's and phase three is match any member who wants a mentor with available mentors and then identify specialty mentors. And I will talk about these different types of mentors in a moment. So that just gives you little steps that you can do and how you can implement it. And again, design it according to your needs of your club, the vision that you have of what you want to do. And then we're going to go to, uh, yes, we're going to go to something here in a minute. There we go, types of mentors. And this is what I've been talking about, is the different types of mentors that you can have in your club. I know that many of you might have heard me speak before on the mentorings. There's the mentoring team. And the mentoring team was made up of Darlene Davies, Nandini Ben Contestant, Marvin Henry, Bob and Peggy Cavanis all helped put these modules together. It took all of us to work through this, listen to people and put it together. These are four of types of mentors that you can have in your club and just share in helping with the mentoring program. So what is the meeting mentor? The meeting mentor is at the meeting the meeting mentor sits beside a new member, and that's what I mentioned earlier. They can be that person that's been there for a month, and they've done timing, they've done grammarian, whatever those small roles that they start out with, and then they can help there. If time commitment, it can be done within the meeting time. And the benefits helps the newest members feel welcome, and also they can relate. The next one is a specialty mentor. I'll use an example is there's individuals in our club and I know there's other clubs that people have been in contests but they're not in contests now and they're choosing to help mentor those individuals that want to start being in a speech contest or evaluation, stable topics, or humorous. So that is a person that has done that, has done very well and has points and tips to give to individuals and give them that one-on-one. -on -one. The foundation mentor is a little bit longer in the sense that it would be anywhere from six months to a year and you can set that up with your mentee. The mentors can set that up with their mentee. Maybe it's for three months, maybe it's for six months. It is all dependent on what that agreement is. And again, there's forms in there 
in the mo module to help you, to guide you through that process. And the time commitment uh, for that, as I said, is six months or three months. And then the benefit is members more likely to stay with the club and achieve goals faster. Then there is the mentor coach, and that is the person that coaches and provides support to mentors and the program coordinator. And that's the go-to person. When the mentors are, or mentees, maybe have some challenges that they want to share with somebody, then that is your mentor coach. And their time commitment is the one year, being the year for the club year, from July 1st to the end of June of the next year. And then the benefits is it strengthens the mentoring program because you have that go-to person for that. So then we're going to go on to building the best mentoring relationships. This is very important because we it's all about building relationships. And I know that many of you know that, either in business or whatever career you're in, Relationships are so important, and this is no different. So on this, there is four pieces. Build, establish, support, and transform. So that is building the best mentoring relationships. And once again, I'm just going to touch on it. Please go to our module, module four, as mentioned on the screen here. So build, it's about building outstanding relationship. It takes time to get to know one another. And it's sharing, you know, what you do or what your interests are or what's happening in your life and you want to share those things. And it's about the mentee you would like to accomplish during that contract is figure out what it is and ask the question, what was the reason you joined Toastmasters? Because usually that gives you a clue of why they are being part of the Toastmaster program. And the second part is ask questions that will help them to understand what the mentees prefer and what way of learning. Lots of times, some are visual, some it's hearing, some it's writing, it could be emails, however that works. And it's figuring out what those pieces are. And that's a few points in how you start building the uh, the relationship. Then we'll go to establish. And this is the mentee's key goals. So it's it's defining the mentee's objectives, the smaller tasks and activities that will work towards achieving the mentee's goals. Make a plan so that it's something for, e for them to follow along. They're new and it's important that we take those small steps. One thing that I do want to mention here is you've got two manuals. Please make sure that you explain those manuals. It, it's, what I mean by that is saying the competent communicator, go through just showing them very briefly what the goals are in the, in the 10 speeches, and then at the back of the book, there to put the dates down and get the VP of Education to initial it. That's something that sometimes is missed, and I want to mention it here so that it's not, and have that, the mentee's responsibility to do that, but they need to be informed about it. And then describe what success looks like to them. Everybody has a different way of looking at what success means, and let's really understand what that mentee is wanting to accomplish. And it could be that it's tied into work, and, and you're going to be helping them how they can figure that out to so do some of their speeches as part of their work goals. The next one is support. This is huge because we all need support. I'm in business, and I have a, a mentor, and I have an individual that she's a business coach, and she's a mentor as well. She's one that has been with me from the beginning of starting my business. And you know, I've had lots of Toastmaster friends out in the communities being mentors, internationally wide as well. And they made a huge difference because they gave you tips and it shortens those steps. And I can't stress that enough, how important that is. 
we all need mentors. That's what gives us the asset to be more successful. So in the support stage, encourage, assess the progress, and take whatever corrective action needs to be, and maybe they're struggling with something. Whatever that is, they could be struggling with um, fear, they're not feeling confident, they're unsure of what to do. Make sure you clearly understand where the struggling is and encourage them to be engaged in the club roles and responsibilities of what the club is involved. There's club events and there's contests, there's you know educationals that are put on by the club. Get them involved and hopefully encourage them to even go to the conferences and the conventions. Believe me, once you go there once, you're hooked. You'll be there for a long, long time. I've been in this area for almost 20 years and I love going to the conventions. So get ready. If you haven't been, please join. And I understand Edmonton is having theirs April 28th and 29th weekend. So the transform is the last one and it's on page 12. And this is to continue with the relationship or will there be changes? And this is part of three pieces that you may look at. Is first, end the partnership and look for a new partnership with someone else. And that, that shift happens and it's happened. I'm a mentor and I've had people I mentored quite a while, but then they got somebody else, and I encourage that. We are not the be-all, end-all mentor, even if you're assigned as a mentor. You want to encourage them to tap into other members of the club. Lots of people have great skills and strengths, and you want them to tap into that person. You are there to support and guide them and make sure that they get what they need. Decide to continue with the same mentor-mentee partnership with new time commitments, new goals could be the next one. And the third one is end the partnership, but usually what happens, that means we celebrate all the successes. And lots of people out there love chocolate, I understand, and so they go out for dessert or whatever is important or exciting to them. So these are... That's how you're about to build a mentoring relationship. So the other modules that I mentioned is there's module one, which is promoting mentoring program. And also there's module three, training the mentors and mentees. I'm not going to talk about those tonight, but you can reference them with the links that Glenn has kindly put together for us for you to access. Now, there is the challenges, and in our module two, page seven, these are mentioned. I put them down into shorter sentences than what's in in the in the manual. But more new members than experienced. I hear that quite a bit when I'm listening to others or being at conferences or contests, and I hear this. And lots of times when new clubs start, there's maybe not some seasoned members or ones that have, you know, are experienced and are part of the club. I know that we do have our mentors that guide us along, but for the long term, you've got to develop those members and get into having that experience. So that is one challenge that there is. The second one is concern of the amount of time required. Everybody is busy. You you bet it is. Everybody is busy out there, and there's lots of challenges these days with the economy and the way it is. And, and I know that it's stressful times. I hear that as well. But the thing is, this is some of the challenges. And I'm, what I'm about to tell you about a new concept, I think you're going to see that we're addressing most of these challenges. And I feel that's going to be the exciting part to this whole thing. And then start mentoring program quickly. People just want to get it started. And this is one way that you can get it started when I bring in this other concept that can maybe help you to get it on off the ground and get it started and use these modules to implement them a little bit at a time. The other 
challenges are concern there's too much work you know I know it takes up time and that's why these modules were developed because it was there was not a lot on mentoring at that you know when we developed this many years ago and this is one reason we wanted these manuals to have a guidance a little you know the sheets there to use rather than think what we ought to do and it is easier to follow once you see the the manuals and I encourage you to go to them members don't understand the value of mentoring that's very true until they experience it and maybe a lot of people new or seasoned haven't experienced mentoring I I know I have and I believe in it so much because over the years and when I started Toastmasters uh, many years ago as I mentioned I had a mentor and it was Keith Miles and he took me under his wing and he showed me what the program was about he also shared the possibilities and he helped with speeches or if you had fears and believe me I had many many fears and he helped me through that process and to overcome it I remember him asking about being in the contest and I'd only been in the club for six months but I had done the six speeches and he said how do you be in the contest and I said contest my heart sunk I said no and I went home and I thought about it I thought why am I in Toastmasters this is the chance for me to try these things out and we're there to learn well I uh, all the courage I could muster I went back to him and I said I'll do it I tell you contests were just that word sent me in a frenzy and I know lots of you know me and you think oh she's confident she can do that but you all everyone has their fears and they have their beginnings and that's what I want everybody to understand is that's why mentoring is so important you've got that person cheering you on they're the best cheerleader and in the contest and you can look out and look at that mentor it just builds you up that value is huge and when I was uh, had the privilege of being our district governor for district 42 at that time in 2006 I had many mentors I could not have done my year without all the mentors and the guiding people behind me and it makes a huge difference if there's other challenges you might come up with them and I'm encouraging you if there is questions or you have other questions, uh, concerns or challenges you can email me and and I would be more than happy or the team to get back to you so I'm offering you those are just a few that we're just mentioning tonight so we have those challenges and so what are the options to address the challenges I want you to think for a few minutes and I'm sure there's so many creative minds out there that the mind is just ticking and I wished I could hear some of this or you know talking this way I don't get to hear what or see what is maybe the excitement that you maybe have and say hey I have one and you're putting your hand up in the air and saying I've got an idea the thing is lots of times when we're faced with these challenges this is when the best creativity happens that it's about figuring out what can we do a little bit different that can make a difference and yet still accomplish the same thing now I want you to visualize right now that I've got hand gestures going uh, even though you can't see me and I know that Lorraine is evaluating me at this time and one of the questions is did they use body language well I'm using body language whether you see it or not so we'll carry on so what are the options to address here is the concept that we initiated in a club here in Calgary and what was happening all those challenges that I mentioned they were the concerns that we heard consistently and we had ourselves in our clubs and this is what we wanted to address 
So the mentoring teams were formed and it was it was just a chance that we took to see if it was something that could make a difference and benefit the experience and also the new people and the ones that are mid-range, anywhere from six months and up. That's where I call the mid-range. So what are mentoring teams? I came up with the word here tonight uh, when I was working on this and I had together each achieves more strengths because there's an S on the end of team and it is you have when you have these teams form there's many strengths and just remember just you're in Toastmasters but you've got careers and there's lots of talent and you bring that to the club and you can bring it to the team. So it's building the teams with individuals, whether it's, uh, it can be made up of experience. And remember I mentioned that foundation mentor who is six months to a year. You're mid-experienced. Those could be your meeting mentors. They're also, they've been in the club maybe six months, a year, year and a half. And they are starting to help people. And then you may have a specialty mentor as part of it. And that's the individual that does specialty. There's a skill that they are extremely good at. And they become one of the specialists. And then newbies. That's what can build the mentoring teams. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So the other thing is, just hang on here for a minute. So how are the teams organized? The teams are organized, as I mentioned, with a combination of people. The combination of one experience, you can have several, but I'm just going to just do it small here, just so you get an idea. You can have one seasoned mentor, and that could be your lead mentor for the team. And then you've got the mid-range, the six months to a year or one and a half plus years, then the newbies mixed in with that grouping. And then you have, as I mentioned, your foundation uh, mentor can be your lead for, for the team. Also, the team determines how many people they feel they can mentor. And this is where we were worried about more uh, more newbies than experienced. You can have the experience, the seasoned ones, but you've also got ones that have been in the club for a while. They're mixed in with the season, but you bring the newbies right into that mix. So there could be a team of anywhere from four, five, or, or six. It depends on how those teams are built, and it. I'll give you maybe a few examples in a minute. Match the mentees per the requests, uh, you know, to what they want to as far as the, uh, the mentor. They maybe have pointed out, I would like that person as my mentor. We'll include, that'll be the team that they would likely go on and encourage it that way. And then specialty mentors maybe be part of that team. In one case, uh, the specialty mentor is actually, he's got his own team and he is mentoring individuals that are doing contests. And he is the go-to guy and he's being the specialty. So he may have one or two people as part of his team or he's part of a team. So that's how, that's how they're organized. So what is involved in team meetings? Well, it's about review the mentee and mentor roles. And again, those are in these manuals. And it is one thing to go through it and have that discussion about what is the mentee role and the mentor's role and explain that and have that. Review the goals of the team members. What are the goals for the years and have those discussions. And then there's challenges and concerns that they have. Let's address them. Put that on the table. And let's get it so we can talk about it and address them right away as quickly as possible. 
And then everyone is sharing their experiences and getting engaged in that whole process. It doesn't matter if they've been there for a month. They've had an experience and they can talk about the timing, how they did timing and how they felt and what it meant. And if there's another newbie that's joined and on there, they can relate to the person that's just experienced it. And that's where they can be very, very helpful on the team. Then, of course, there is nothing like having fun. We have lots of laughs. And it's energy, and it's exciting, and it's enthusiastic. Everybody comes up with something to make us all laugh. Now, isn't that a phenomenon? Anyway, that is how what is involved in the teams. Now, of course, I want to address what can be some challenges. Some of the challenges are prefers one-on-one -on -one versus being part of a team. You know, there's individuals that feel they need just that one-on-one. -on -one. And we had individuals in our club that mentioned that they needed that more one-on-one. -on -one. Well, then you address it. And that's maybe where the foundation mentor does a little more one-on-one -on -one with them. And eventually, you might think they might join the team for a meeting here and there. And it, it's part of that. But again, we're addressing the needs of what that person is. Organizing convenient time for attendance. Yes, that can be a challenge. There are several ways that we can address that, and I'll talk about that in the benefits area. But it can be hard because you've got four or five people, you've got to coordinate times and a place, and it can be very difficult because, again, everyone is very busy. Third one is meeting in a convenient location. Well, some could be in the north and some in the deep south, and how are you going to do this? It could be a bit of a challenge, trying to find that convenient location. Then the time involved to organize the team meetings. Well, we've got to put a meeting together. We've got to organize the time and gather everybody. It sounds like it's overwhelming. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take some of that overwhelm away from you in a few minutes. So hang in there. We will get there. Then there's the next one, monitoring the progress of the team members. It can be difficult. If you're thinking four or five people on a team, you're not doing it by yourself. And I'm going to talk a bit, a bit more about that. But again, the, on the onset of it, it sounds like a lot of work. And I wanted to bring those challenges forth. And you know what? You may have other challenges that you're thinking about at this moment and share those with us. And the thing is, just remember, this is a new concept and I've had it in force. This is the third year. And believe me, the first year was kind of a here and there and what would happen. And we're evolving and things are getting a little better and stronger. And I'll tell you what the benefits are. So the benefits are is with the group. So the benefits are there's more people involved to help out and share ideas and also to support others. Specialty can be one of the group as I mentioned and that specialty and on the on the team meeting when you're ha having it that person can give a few tips or ideas and share with those. So you're all sharing the, you know, the whole piece of this, and it's not a lot of work. When we have teams, you're sharing and delegating and helping one another out. Convenient. Here's a one way to convenient. Uh, we do have a mentoring team. I lead a mentoring team. There's about five of us on there. And what we do is we do it, well, I've got what we call Zoom now, but Skype is one thing that you can do, and that's what we do. I send them a link. And they come on, and everybody comes on the call. I did have a conference call, but we've changed to this, and this seems to be going well. The other convenient thing that others are doing is they meet about a half an hour or 45 minutes before club time. And everybody is going to be going to the meeting, and they set that time, and they do it prior to the meeting. 
The odd uh, team do it after the meeting. They find it's easier, but they're tying it into the meeting, so it's making it more convenient. And this ties right into location. Well, with location, if you have the club, you're going to the club anyway, tie it into that meeting time so that everybody's going. It encourages members to go to the club and go to the meeting, and that location now is settled. It doesn't matter if you're coming from the north, south, east, or west. And of course, for a location, if you're going to use Skype or Zoom or, or conference call or whatever wonderful technology you have, use that. And you know, at first, when I introduced that idea, they weren't sure about it, but now they find it easier because it doesn't matter where they are, they could be coming from a, their job or they could be going somewhere, but they will come to the meeting because they can do it wherever they are and, and get to their, you know, whether it's home and they're leaving again right after or whatever it is. I know for myself as a mentor and leading a team, this has saved time. And that's the next one. And it is saving time. We're not driving. It is a certain time. Like I've set a meeting for next Monday night at 5 o'clock. I send them a link and we're going to have our meeting. Well, I think we are. I, I just sent it out. So I'm waiting for all their confirmation. So this is where time can be saved. So to continue our benefits is the monitoring. On a team, you can have individuals, especially those individuals that have been in the club six months, a year, year and a half or more. Lots of times there's someone in your team that likes to do Excel sheets and these monitoring uh, programs. And that's the person that can be the one that you delegate to and they will organize that. They're happy to do it because it's one of their strengths. And that's the other piece that I want to mention is, what are the strengths within your team? Really build on that. And I, that piece of it is somebody else that loves to do it. Well, they would, you can do that and delegate it, and then it's less stress. And two, it's not on to one person. That's why teams work. You can start the mentoring program now. So what you can do is this. Ask in your club, how many experienced uh, individuals do you have in your club? How many seasoned ones that are in your club? How many new ones? How many in the mid-range? Figure out all those pieces. And then your mentors be your foundation. They be your lead for the teams and they start the lead, and then you start adding individuals to it. And on, I'll talk about the team that I have formed, so it just gives you, I can put it in perspective for you. I'm leading the team. I have another gal. She's been in the club now three, four years, but when we started, of course, she was about two. She came in, and then I had another person that was a little bit more experienced, and then we had a newbie or newbies. So what happened was this, and I wanna share this piece of what the value of these teams are. And it's something we didn't know, but has evolved, and especially this last year. And the exciting part of it is when we do these team meetings, you, the seasoned mentors are mentoring, or in another way, the individuals that are mid-range or new, they're getting to experience how mentoring works and how to mentor and how to delegate and engage and what that program is. And it just gives them a better idea. So what has evolved from these teams is this. That individual that was around the two years is now stepped up and is a mentor to another person. They, they formed, they came together, but they're part of our team. But she is mentoring that newbie. 
So she does a little more on the uh, uh, outside the meeting. She at the club or talking on the phone or emails. That's her mentoring piece. But we can have a combination of that lead, but then you now build mentoring uh, partnerships within the teams. She, it was smooth in the sense that she already experienced it. She knows what it looks like, and there they go, and they're doing it. And that happened on other teams. All of a sudden, we had individuals stepping up, and either into specialty or meeting mentors, or, and some of them will take on the lead roles. And we, as the season ones, are stepping back a little bit more. This lessens the work for everybody. It spreads it out. I do not find it as challenging because it is shared work and we have so much fun. It creates more value because you're getting a lot of different ideas. It's not just from one person. You're getting it from four or five people, different ideas to help with speeches, or feedback, or support, and all those things. The value just mounts up. So now that is the piece that I wanted to really spend some time on was that portion of it, of what the benefits of putting these teams together. I'm hoping I've explained it as clearly as possible. And of course, again, if you have any questions, this is the question period time and questions and answers. I'm not sure how our time is going, but I'm, if there's any questions, um, I'm hoping I can see the questions. They should pop up in the thing, or if you want to unmute yourselves and ask questions, feel free to do so. Um, we're, we're at about 30, almost 40 minutes, 35 minutes. So um, if people want to stick around and ask questions, feel free to. Um, I'll also show you where to go to find the, uh, the information. Any questions? You can type them in the chat window. Uh, there's a question from Arlene. She wants to know how many members in your club, Mona? Uh, the amount in our club now, we're anywhere from 25 to 30. It bounces around, but the 25 mark. Okay, 25 to 30. You know, another question coming from Betty Chasson. Thank you for everybody for being patient with me. Oh, Betty just says thanks. It was great. Are there any other questions from anybody else? I see a couple more people typing there, Glenn. Yeah, Rick Simon's got a question. How many are on your mentoring team, Rick wants to know. Okay, on my mentoring team right now, we have five. That's my team, if that's what he's meaning. Yeah, and, and so team. that's made up of what? One senior person, a couple yeah, what, and a couple. Yeah, so what that's made up, yeah, what it's made up is I'm the lead mentor. Then I have another gal, and uh, Marion has been in the club three years now at this point, and she's now mentoring another person that is six months to a year and mentoring her, and she's on our team. We had another person that returned to our club after being in university, and he's joined back into our team, but he feels like he's just starting again, but he is. Uh, he's got some, you know, experience behind him, and then we have another person as well that is has joined us and and a newbie. So that's what's made up, and and we determine the numbers as well. Each team determines what they feel they can manage. We, as the season member, uh, uh, season uh, the foundation one, the lead. We try to find those mid ones that we can encourage to be mentors. They're the ones coming up and team up together. I was mentoring Marion, and then she just we just flowed in together, and then she's starting to now mentor others and the way the process is going. So hopefully that answered it clearly. 
And for everybody's benefit, I put up on the screen the uh, clipping from the District 42 site, and the, the link is there for the District 42 site, um, where you can find the modules that Mona was talking about and all the forms, etc., and a link to a webinar that they've done. Uh, Rick wants to know, how many mentoring teams do you have in your club, Mona? Uh, there's, I think we've got, uh, I have to think here for a minute, I think four or five. Four or five. Yep. And then we've got one person that's a specialty. And one. he's just doing specialty like for contests, that's the specialty he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And so he's become more that specialist. All right. Rick's got another one, I think. Yeah. Oh, he just says, okay, thanks. Okay. Is there any feedback of what people are feeling about what they think about a mentoring team in their club? Uh, someone just asked if I was posting the recording on the D99 website. I'll be posting it on uh, YouTube, and once it's on YouTube, it will show up on the District 99 site as well. The okay. stuff that's on YouTube automatically shows up on the District 99 site. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Rodwell responds, makes a lot of sense to have mentoring teams. Good. And just so everybody can kind of see the documents that they look like, I'll, I'll throw up on the screen here so you can kind of see. This is the module two that Mona was talking about. And when you look at page five, it has sort of the information that she went through about how to set up your team. And then the other document is module four, building the best mentoring relationships. And this one has the overview that she talked about where you go through the steps, building, establishing, uh, supporting and transforming. So none of them are very long. They're all 10 to 12 pages long, so they're pretty pretty easy reads. Uh, something that would and be. And lots of forms. Yeah, a lot of them have forms in it too. Yeah, so a lot of them have forms that you can use, and there's also uh, forms. This forms are available separately here. It looks like too. Yeah. Well, Mona, thank you so much for presenting tonight. What, what a wealth of information and what a great way to start a mentoring program. Maybe if clubs don't have a mentoring program right now, or they may want to try out your mentoring team format if they already have a, a mentoring program. So thank you for hopping on. It doesn't look like we have any more questions. As Glenn said, we will pop this up on our District 99 site. And again, thank you to Mona Cooley past district governor of district 42 for preparing and presenting our webinar this morning thank you so much mona for hopping on with us this evening you're welcome and just for my last statement to everybody mentoring is one of your greatest asset to success and i wish everybody success great thank you mona and thank you everybody for joining us tonight